Hello Chipheads and hello Rodney. Yes, a long time ago I used to have a, a lot of quirks uh, when it came to board gaming. For instance, there was a time when I was always worried about how the box was arranged. Nowadays, I don't really care too much. I used to be scared to play games with my sister because my sister is a riffle shuffler. Yes, she does that. But you know what? Riffle shuffles do not bend cards too much and they are the best way to shuffle a deck. Another quirk I used to have was occasionally I'd watch a player at the table and they'd do something like this. This is not your quirk, this is their quirk. And they need to be politely told to STOP IT! Now there's only one quirk that I know of that I have left and unfortunately it's an uncontrollable response to winning. When I've got my cards or whatever and I feel that I'm going to win, that's when the sides of my mouth start curling upwards and my eyes do something. I don't know, you'll have to ask my sister, she knows. She knows the sign. And this smile just forces its way onto my face. It doesn't matter how many fingers I try to chomp on or if I think of Margaret Thatcher on a cold day, it doesn't work. I have this smile forcing its way through the cracks on my visage and uh, you know that uh, I think I'm going to win. <laughs> and now, <laughs> you know too much. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was... um. I don't know. It was something. I, it was something. <laughs> Sometimes we get insight into our fellow gamers that we don't expect. Mm. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty great, though. And welcome to Watch It Play Table Talk Back. My name is Rodney Smith. This is... Pat McDonald. And we're here to talk about your quirks. Well, not yours specifically. All of our quirks. I thought you meant my quirks. Well, maybe yours will comp as well. I don't have any quirks. You sure? <laughs> well, let's get to the bottom of this and find out. <laughs> but some of us do. And uh, we want to hear what you had to say about some of yours, including this one that we have from Patricio Garcia, who says, My quirk happens in games with meeples. I always make sure mine are standing straight up. I cringe when people place them upside down, on their side, or anything. Mm. Hmm. Is that something you think about? I don't think about it too much, but I do, I do know that if I do sit one on my side, yeah. like a building or something, I'll comment on it and I'll say, these are, you know, these are the slums. <laughs> so you make yeah. a story out of it. Yeah. Well, I was playing a game, Concordia, recently with uh, one of our other game group members, Michael. And I don't think he was doing this intentionally at all. He was putting his buildings, like, on their sides, upside down. And I was just like, Michael, you're like a terrible architect. Your people keep making these horrific houses. And he just laughed it off. He hadn't noticed, but he said, oh, it kind of fits the theme. We are in Italy here. So, like the leaning towers and everything. Yeah. So he tied it into the gameplay, which I, I respected. JPower2010 says, I sleeve the cards for almost all of my games. Why do I do this? <laughs> Why do you do it? I don't know. You do that, don't you? Fair point. Yes, I have. I, I was more diligent about it probably a couple of years ago, mm. but I gave it up. It's, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of work, and sometimes the games that I might have sleeved don't hit the table that often, and it's like, you know, I wouldn't have worn these out in any noticeable way if I hadn't bothered sleeving them. Yeah, a bunch uh, of empty plastic. A bunch, yeah, exactly. So it's not something I do so much anymore. I don't have a problem with people who do. Like Matt Evans from Board Game Replay, he sleeves... Large cards, small cards, medium, like he's got all the different sleeve sizes. Oh, sizes, that's, that's intense. I don't know if he's slacked off yet or not, but he was like my sleeve mule for a while because <laughs> I was having trouble finding them at good prices in Canada. So he would like bulk order a bunch of them and then ship them to me. Oh, that's funny. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get contacted by a bunch of Canadians now looking for that service. <laughs> it was pretty helpful. So yeah. I, I think sleeving is good. It helps you play certain games better, easier to shuffle. Yeah, you don't stuff want to mark like, up cards like on Love Letter. You don't want them yeah. backs marked up, right? So yeah, anything where it's very important what the cards are. Magic is a good example. Like I'll sleep my Magic cards, mm -hmm. but that's about it. Yeah, so it, it, maybe it's a quirk if you do it obsessively, but otherwise, I think it has a function. Mm. Speaking of Magic, hey Matt Gouillard writes, "I'm especially bad about neatness with Magic: The Gathering. I change my sleeves every month or two because I can't stand the bent edges and slightly gunky feel they get from being in your hands so much." Pre-sleeving. Oh, that's, that's intense. That is kicking it up a notch, isn't it? A little it? bit, yeah. I, I, I think we're definitely in quirk zone now, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know uh, people who do tournaments will often, right before a tournament, they'll change their sleeves. Oh, okay. But I can imagine, uh, like, I've probably used the same sleeves for like three years now. 
I know, I can tell. They got some character. Yeah, they got some character. Yeah. Your, your, your cards are basically marked because of the sleeve. <laughs> I'll change them if the sleeve gets damaged, like if a card starts flopping yeah, at the side yeah, or, yeah, something, or, but, or something. Yeah, but other than that. Okay, well, Matt, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good one. Yeah. The Dragon Table says, I'm a compulsive straightener. In the Table Talk video, when you were nonchalantly putting cards in the discard pile, I just wanted to reach into the screen and straighten it. Some of the edits in my videos are done to cut out shots of me straightening components. In Cargo Zone, if someone places a tile that shifts the whole play area, I cannot continue until all of the roads and cities are aligned again. I may have a problem. <laughs> you may have a problem. <laughs> you have at least one problem making great videos. If you haven't checked out the Dragon Table, just fantastic instructional videos and uh, really worth your time. So keep one of those problems. The, the straightening problem, I don't know. I, uh, I have that problem. Yeah. Basically the exact same way uh, as she mentioned. Whenever there's a game like uh, Carcassonne or something yes. like that, um, so or anything with tiles. Get yeah, they get around. And I can ignore it up to a point. But once it gets like too earthquake far, level, like yeah. when things are just not looking right at all. Yeah, that reminds me. Actually, we're playing uh, Settlers of Catan, uh, two different games set up yes. uh, on two different sides of the table. My side of the table, the board looked perfectly fine. Okay. Halfway through the game, I look over the other side of the table, and it it literally looks like an earthquake had <laughs> ravaged the the yeah. island of Catan. It was just everything was separated. Oh yeah, that it was ridiculous. Maybe they were playing with a variant. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Angie Hamill writes, when playing Dominion, I put cards in order by cost value and then alphabetically. <laughs> I also do the same with Machi Koro and Expansion. As soon as a new building comes out, I rearrange. Silly I know, but I can't help myself. Well, I don't know. It could be a little silly, but I do appreciate some organization on the table because it can, it can help when you're playing it, both at the table and off of it. Speaking of which, let's check out this video. Well, hey there, Rodney. I um, thought I should weigh in since apparently I inspired this little topic of yours. And I just wanted to say that um, I'm sorry for the distress I caused by sweeping all of the pieces of my Twilight Struggle into the box. I feel bad about it. It's now organized. I hope you're happy. And I, and I thought I would just show you, so that you don't think I'm always such a horrifying slob, I thought I would show you how I, I keep one of my games in particular, and that's that's Memoir 44. So. First off, Memoir uh, has most of its boxes are here on these shelves, but then, um, you know, there are a lot of expansions and pieces and things, so they live in here. Uh, I can show you up here the dice. Here, those are uh, this is sort of a, a, a manifest of what's in here, all of the tokens, all the cards, that's all of the cards. And then uh, in here are the expansions. Got the uh, base game there, the air pack in the Mediterranean, Pacific and Eastern Front, and the terrain pack and Overlord. All the campaign books, all of the uh, expansions, uh, all of the rules, everything, all the maps are all in those boxes that I showed you over there. I just want to let you guys know, I, I may have really messed up on Twilight Struggle, but um, I'm not all bad. I'm a gamer just like you guys, so thanks. Well, I think, Rich, you've absolved yourself. At least in my eyes, I'm sure, in the eyes of our viewers as well, because, man, that was organization to the nth degree. Mm. I think that makes up for your arm sweep cleanup of Twilight Struggle. <laughs> impressive, impressive. Impressive. All right, what do we got next? Grelem02 says, I cannot play a game that uses paper money. I will be holding it in my hand the entire game, folded up like I'm one of the participants in a back alley craps game from one of those mob movies. <laughs> wow, he really paints a picture. Yeah, man, I know. <laughs> Makes everyone laugh. Now, yeah. I don't know. I have a quirk. I can't play games with paper money. Like, I just won't play them. Uh, well, that's not true. I'll, yeah. I'll change them out. Trade out for, like, the coin money. I, yeah. um, I can handle the paper money if I have to. Like, you know, someone busts out a game of Monopoly, I can handle yeah, it. Yeah. But I don't want to. No. I much prefer any sort of coin or a little credit Token? card. Tokens. Tokens. Uh, yeah. Even even if you have to write how much money you have You'd on paper, do that. I'd rather do that than count money. Oh yeah, I just yeah. it crumples up. It's hard oh. to organize. Get out of here with your paper money. <laughs> David Brown, nice to see you. Writes: My main quirk is in descent. When a monster is in range of the heroes and they're all facing random directions, mm. I have to take their pieces and the monster and make them all face each other. Otherwise, it just looks silly to me. I love this quirk. I do. Oh, me too. Especially yeah. like playing D and D and everything. Right. Every time anything happens, you always just want to rearrange. And sometimes the players will even say something like, "How did that goblin shoot me? He's not even looking at me." Oh no way. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> well, again, like yo, know, you want them 
they, they get oh, these dynamic yeah. poses. They should be threatening and menacing each other, not like, wow, this is nice walls in this dungeon. We've got here. Even when the players are hanging out together on the board, like if they're you just arranging them, like, how they're in the end, they usually the one guy with the spear will have it jammed up at the dwarf's throat. Like, you know, how you doing, buddy? What's going on? <laughs> Joseph Bozarth says, it gets me when someone keeps the communal dice in front of them when they are done rolling. Ah, oh, this is a good point. Mm. But I think, I'm sure everyone's been guilty of this at some time or another. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you roll and you don't think about it, you just take the dice in. Right. For, for me, I think the most important thing is, uh, that's usually how you signify your turn's done. Like, after you roll the dice, you do whatever mm. you're doing and then you yeah, yeah, pass, pass the dice. In. There you go, it's official, my turn's over. Turn's over. Yeah, that's a good, good point. I mean, I think, it's one of those things again, Anyone can make this mistake. Just like, like I said, putting your cards upside down compared to everyone else. But if you're the only one at the table doing it, <laughs> and if people are commenting on it, maybe just, you know, just pay a little, pay a little more attention. attention. Yeah. Mr. CT189 says, one of my many quirks is seeing game components and not knowing what game they came from. <laughs> For instance, what game were the cards you used in the Table Talk video? They looked interesting. The board game breakfast intro does it to me often. I don't care that he's boiling the components, I just want to know what game they're from. Yeah, my bad. I do try to be mindful of people's curiosity, because I, I have the same compulsion when I see something like, I don't recognize that, what game is that? That was from Elysium. We have an instructional video if you'd like to check it out. I also find this in podcasts. If I'm listening to a podcast, like half listening, and then I suddenly get interested because I hear what they're talking, I'm like, yeah, what game are they talking about? What is, please say the name again. And they don't say it ever again. So uh, yeah, that can be frustrating. Yeah, and I mean, I have this problem a little bit with, you know, that uh, little basket of game components that anyone leaves behind in my apartment. <laughs> Sometimes I'll dig through that and uh, I won't even know what they're from. It's like, what is this? Yeah, Pat, you are like a, like a sparrow or a bird or something. <laughs> like, if, if a game component drops in your apartment. Mine? Yeah, mine. You take it and you throw it in this basket. <laughs> and I've gone in there later and gone, hey, that's, that's from that game. I'm missing that piece. Uh, yeah, I bet after a while you even forget what they're from. Oh, right? totally. Yeah. Yeah. Pete Shirely. <laughs> <laughs> Not it. Sure, sure. Oh, there's no L. No. Sure, Shirey. No, doesn't it look like there should be an L? I know, I just it, keep it, seeing it. It tripped me up forever. Sorry, Shirley. Sure, sh 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 Shirey? Pete. Sorry, Pete. Shirley, continue. Don't call me Shirley. Sorry. <laughs> it's just read his comment. Pete Shirey says, yes. You can bet every time we play a game now, the cards will be upside down. <laughs> 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 yes, Pete and I have played a couple games in person, and I'm sure it will happen again. Well, maybe not, now that he knows my weakness. Now I'll just have to avoid him. Ha! Mm. Take that! Paxton73 says, I have a quirk. Every time I lose, I flip the table over. Th that, that, that's nonsense. That can't be true. I hope not. If it is true, get help. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of needing help, sometimes you can't recognize your own quirks, and you need a friend or family member to point it out. Hi, this is Dad versus Daughter. I'm Tim the Dad. I'm Megan the Daughter. And you want to know about our quirks when we play the games? <laughs> well, Megan, I think you've got the quirks. I do. I have OCD, and um, I like everything to be where it should be. If we've already pre-established where, like, an off pile is, or just like a certain deck of cards, or like the pieces and tokens, it has to be in that spot. Like, it will drive me nuts if it is not in that spot. And like. If we play Star Realms, all the bases have to be facing a certain way, because that just annoys me, and I don't know. A lot of things annoy me in games. <laughs> I don't think I have any quirks when you we don't. play games, do I? You really don't. Other than giving you an education on 80s music or movies or something like that. Mm. Yeah. So. yeah, that's not a quirk, that's just you. <laughs> no, that's just me. So that's it. Bye. Artemis Bach writes, I always put a box together so that the top matches the bottom. I wanted to bring this one up because just this week, I've realized I have been starting to pay attention to that. I've been doing that. I don't know where that came from. Yeah, I, you know, like, I do oh, the same oh, thing. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, I'll look up the, under the bottom and go, wait, is this the same way? Oh yeah, it is. It makes no difference. No. Right? <laughs> but, quirk. Mad Bono one says, when piling my trains, meeples, or workers, or whatnots on my side. <laughs> whatnots? I have whatnot. no games with whatnots. No, me neither. <laughs> on my side of the board, I absolutely have to make a pattern with them. Why? I have no idea. Yes, that's true. People like to stack. I'll do that sometimes. Becomes like a little mini dexterity game. Yeah. Right? Like how high can I stack these meeples? I like to see if I can make uh, like little robots out of them. Like get the legs, then have the middle, and have it like hold together. <laughs> right, yeah. right, right, right. Now the gamers will know we were here. <laughs> little Canadian can humor there. Con. Can yeah. con. Some people will know what that means. If you don't, look it up. <laughs> All right, next. Fernando Amaral writes random sounds when people are thinking. That's his quirk. Example, my wife says, Ducka, 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 said quickly. <laughs> I tell her she sounds like a boat with a busted out port motor. Uh, I do like sometimes making 
little sounds or jingles or yeah, like, yeah. We'll I think I do things. that too. Like yeah. a, my turn, my, my turn. turn, talking about my, my turn. turn, my <laughs> turn, my turn. Yes, <laughs> which probably frustrates some people, but I, I kind of enjoy it. And if someone else starts doing it, I'll join in. I'll, I'll oh, chime yeah. in if I know know the words or don't. I remember the one week we played uh, Ticket to Ride, and I don't think a, oh. a single minute passed where somebody wasn't singing that. I got a ticket, ticket to, to ride. ride. Tom Olson writes, my quirk is the methodical counting of game components. It may not seem like much of one, but I count all of them. Cubes, dice, meeples, cards, boards, other pieces. I'll even look up the quantities on Board Game Geek if the rules don't cover it. I need to do it before playing a game the first time, and if a game night had something component heavy, I know I'll be recounting the box soon enough. <laughs> This is unique, but Pep can feel your pain here a little bit, uh, can't you? Because, because you know, if, if you don't have all the components, it can impact the gameplay, right? Tell us a story, Pep. Kingdom Builder. <laughs> Tell us the story of Kingdom Builder. So one fateful evening, yes. me and some compatriots decide we're going to play a game. We're going to buy a game, play it on the spot, have some fun with it. A noble quest. A noble quest. Yes. So we buy Kingdom Builder from our friendly local gaming store. <laughs> yes. And... Bring it home. Bring it home, unseal the plastic. I decide, oh, let's just open this up, see what's in here. <laughs> if it opens, yes. And, oh, components, excellent. Notice anything missing? I think so. Yeah, I feel like there's, there's something missing here. What, what was missing? Cities. Right. All not, the, not one city. All the, all the little components, the little settlements you need to place every time you put a tile down, right? Every one of yeah. them. <laughs> so, essential and, to the game, you would say. Very essential. And you need something like 40 each. Right. So, I mean, what are the odds that I'm even going to have 40 of something lying around the house? I wasn't even with my games. I didn't have any other games to pull apart. So, it would have made counting the settlements very easy for Tom. Yeah. Zero. Zero. There's zero. <laughs> so, you know what you need to do? What? Well, for, for starters, you need to find a temporary solution. Yes. So I had these lying around, blank cubes, you know? Right. Those were handy. For prototyping games and things. But I mean, that's for a game collector, that's no good. Yeah. yeah. No, you need... You're an odd duck that way, having these handy. Yeah, you, you need the actual settlements. So I what contacted them, which oh. is what you should do. Mistakes happen, right? Mistakes happen. Right, so you contact them and say, hey, could we get some replacements? I wasn't even that upset. No. No, and I said... It was funny, if anything. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. It was a funny little story, because I expected, you know, maybe you'd be missing one, but not all of them. No, right? That's so rare. So, yeah, contacted them, uh, got them to send me the bag, and lo and behold, a bag of replacement cities, awesome. you know? There were uh, 40 black, 40 white, uh, 42 orange, and uh, 34 blue. And that's perfect. What? Because nobody likes blue, right? What? So I didn't even send you the right number? No, not even not even the right number. Wow. Good good job, Queen Games. I know. <laughs> okay. And you still don't have the right number here, do you? No, no. But you, you I gave on. up. <laughs> I gave up. I just play with the cubes now. My collection <laughs> is incomplete forever. Craziness. Craziness. So Tom, Tom, this would drive you nuts. This would drive you bonkers, I'm sure. T T T for life, right? A quirk I have is I need to shuffle the cards. Seeing people shuffle cards horribly bothers me so much. <laughs> yeah, I feel your pain. Actually, Pep, your, your quirk is not poor shuffling, although there, there's maybe been occasions where that's happened. But it's more, you're, of course you're gonna shuffle poorly more often. You're always shuffling. Always. Always. People will just need to tell me at some point to stop. <laughs> you need to stop. It's okay. <laughs> They're shuffled. Put them down. It'll be fine. I think that's your... I don't think you have a lot of gaming quirks, but that's probably that's probably the a, one the, most, the big one. The yeah. one I would attribute to you. This is special to you in our yeah. gaming group, I think. I actually remember uh, I had a friend in high school, and he had a. Uh, I'd say it's a catchphrase for me, okay. where I'd be shuffling, and he'd say, "You shuffled enough decks for a thousand duels." <laughs> yes, and it's true. <laughs> And thanks, guys, so much for all of your funny and true quirky stories. They were they were fun to read and hopefully to share with you guys as well. But until the next episode, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. Oh, three, two, one. Our next submission via three, textual two. art. <laughs> the Dragon Tables. Sorry, I was, and I did it three, two, one. How dare you? Oh, oops. Three, two. The Dragon <laughs> <laughs> Angie Hamill writes, when playing Dominion, I put the cards in order by cost value and then I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's a fluke I even looked at you. I I'm, know. I'm glad I did. <laughs> the stuff you're going to sneak into this video. <sighs> I have to take their pieces and the monsters 
And make them all face each other. 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 It gets me when someone keeps the communal dice in front of them when they were done rolling. Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Table talk, table, table talk, talk, talking about tables and talking, talking. talking. I guess you'd say time to put this game away. Tables, tacos, tacos, talking about tacos, tacos. <laughs>